Taylor series. Okay, so this is basically uh, how do you you need to this is basically an expansion of the function, any function, let's say uh, f of x, consider f of x uh, and the value of x at sorry, the value of f uh, f prime uh, I'll put I'll denote the derivative as f f1, f2, f3 and so on these are the derivatives are known then you can write f near near x equals xi where xi is a quantity we know about it's a it's a value uh, we know what the value is at x of xi and so we're trying to expand the function f about xi so f of xi plus x minus xi f1 xi plus x minus xi square two factorial f2 xi plus so on let me write one few more terms so new line i'll put three dots ellipsis uh, we have x minus xi cube divided by three factorial f3 xi plus so on uh, one of the general term is x minus xi n raised to n factorial times the nth derivative plus so on. So this is an infinite series. It doesn't stop. Now, uh, in principle, we cannot, so infinite series, we will always deal with a finite length of the series to do approximations. So what this is saying is you can tell the value of f at a neighborhood close to x, xi, so xi is one point, this is f. So we know that, uh, let's say that this is some curve f of xi, f of x, and we know the value of the function at xi, and we can actually compute the value of f of x close to the neighborhood of x i by using this series. Break. So this is coming from here. Uh, so just put the value of x at that point you want to find its value and then the series gives it. Now, the question is why are we even want to compute um, f of x in this fashion? Seems like a very uh, inefficient way of computing f of x at a value different than x of xi. And the reason is because when you take measurements in a physical process, you may not have measurements at all the points, right? You, you may have measurements at certain distinct points and you want to know what happens in the neighborhood of that point. Okay, so if you measured something at uh, one o'clock, you want to know what happens at 105. And instead of taking a measurement, if you are able to approximate that function using a series, then you can find what happened at 105, what happened at 1255 and so on. So that's why we have that series. So we'll talk more about how to use the series, but this is something you want to uh, know. 
and we'll see how to how it is used in just a bit. Okay, so uh, a part of this course is knowing how to use things. So uh, if I wrote the formula down, we'll talk about how to use it. And of course, we'll talk about the application. So uh, I'll give you an example where I'll show you how to use this, and then we'll get to the point where we'll be using this for some real uh, physical problems. Some of these will come in the in your uh, homeworks. Okay, so here is uh, an application, or rather a problem. To uh, Taylor series expansion of sine of x up to eight terms in the series. Okay, so we are looking at eight terms, which means that if I write down the formula for f of x, Okay, I should also put, uh, assume x i is zero. So we want to expand it about zero. So let's just put that in the formula I wrote down earlier. F of zero plus x first derivative of f, x squared divided by two factorial, second derivative at zero, cubed, Three factorial f three uh, zero plus x four four factorial f four zero so on so x five five factorial Okay, so that is the eight term. So you only go up to seventh order because the first term has f of zero, right? So that's considered the first term. So that's the uh, eight terms of uh, f of x. Now, we just need to compute, in this case, what the f's are, f zero all the way to seven. Anybody remembers what factorial is? What's three factorial? Six. Six, how did you get that? Three times two, right? So uh, seven factorial, will be seven times six factorial. Six factorial is six times five factorial and so on. Okay. okay, so now let's expand it out. You could, by the way, you could do it yourself too. Uh, we need to find, compute f of x. Let's just take the derivatives before we sub in the value. That's sine of x. What's the derivative of sine? Can we remember the derivative of sine? Cosine. Cosine. Okay, so then that's the second derivative. Sine. Negative sine. The third derivative. Uh, yeah, so that will be the derivative of sine, which is the cosine of x, and the negative will just carry forward. Uh, F4 of x equals Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it will be positive sine of x. Yeah, just repeat. So. Okay, so here we are with f. Now we need to sub in and find the value of f and its derivative at x. Okay, so here are the values. F of zero is, well, sine of zero is zero. The first derivative, so cosine of zero is one. Uh, the, the sine of zero is zero, and we can just keep doing that. F three zero is minus one. 
Zero. One. Zero F. Okay, that sounds not too hard. Okay, so if you then go back and you sub in the values in the formula I wrote down here, you get zero plus X minus X cubed divided by six plus X is to phi divided by 120 minus five zero four zero. Okay, now note X needs to be close to X size zero, right? You cannot just put in the value of X equals uh, I don't know, 0.5, okay, it might might work, might not work, but for a value which is close to zero, which is let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe it'll work. In fact, uh, this is going to be my next question. We have an expansion for the series, a series expansion or Taylor series expansion for sine of X. Uh, let's check if this expansion gives us the right answer because we know everything about the function sine, right? We know what the value is, uh, at any point. So next problem, which is from this first problem is to compute the uh, value of sine at x at some value. So problem two, compute the value of sine x at x equals to 0 0.1 using a Taylor series expansion at x equal to 0. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Use 2, 4, 6, eight terms to do the computation and compare against the actual value. Okay, so this example will tell you, will show us how to compare and check if our expansion uh, makes any sense. So here's the solution. Okay, so first of all, we can actually compute the value at x equal to 0 0.1 by, by sticking that value in a calculator. So the actual value is sine of 0 0.1. When I say 0 0.1 here, it means radians unless I specify it to be in degrees. So sine of 0 0.1 is uh, 0.998. So what I recommend is when you write calculations, uh, limit yourself to four decimal places. That's good enough. You don't need to go all the way to, I don't know, the precision is typically 13 or 14 places, decimal places, but you can stick to four decimal places. Uh, there's some part which I, which I sort of ignored in my earlier, in the book, which tells you about how to check precision, but here's what you want to do. You don't want to, uh, when you do a calculation, do all the calculations in your calculator and just note the final value on the book. Don't truncate the values. Uh, like if, if there's a very complex multiplication, let's say, uh, let's take something simple for now, okay? Don't do this X square on a calculator, write the value down to four places. Don't do the second one to four places right in your, on the paper and then the eight, and then add it up. Because what it does is basically by truncating the values to four places each time and writing it down, you are basically truncating the accuracy of your calculation. Instead, put this whole thing in your calculator and let the calculator figure out to 13 places. And then when you write the final answer down, just put four places and that will prevent the truncation error. So as much as possible, try to do the calculations accurate to 13 places. But when you write it down, the final answer, 
just report four decimal places because um, beyond that, there's no value. Most of the instruments which we deal with, um, it really depends on the unit, but if you get two or three three orders, precision in three decimal places are usually fine. Like we don't want to know anything more than five, five or six places because the precision with, with which things are measured uh, or even uh, for that matter, any scientific calculations, you just don't want to flood with too many numbers. So keep it to four places. Okay, so that's the actual value. Now let's use the Taylor series. So uh, use two terms. We already have the expansion here. Okay, so when you say two terms, it means this, this one, and this one, right? Two terms. So we can see that uh, the two terms. This would be the two terms. Then, if you see the next one, we have four terms would be one, two, three, and four. So up to x cube is four terms. So then. This would be six terms. And then finally, uh, this part would be eight terms. So what we'll do is we'll take, take the two terms, find the value of sine at point one, and then do it for four, six, and eight, and then see how that compares against uh, sine of 0 0.1, which is our true value. Okay, so I did this calculation, uh, but let me just put it on paper, what I did, which is uh, summing it in, in the formula, Okay, so as I said, I took those numbers, I put them in a calculator, got the value. I did not do 0.1, it on the paper, 0.1 cube divided by six, it on paper, because that way I'll truncate some decimal places. So this would be uh, 0 0.0099, zero. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so, Four terms. I already put four terms, right? That's it, four terms. Right. Sine of 0 0.1 to four terms would be. That would be point zero. So it turns out that just with two terms, you're you're well off. You you pretty much recover the four decimal place accuracy. So this would be point one minus point one cube. Put it down. Okay, so you just have to report four terms, but just because we're comparing here, I'm going to put more decimal places and show you how the answer differs. So I actually have the answer to like 13 places, but let me just put it to another four more decimal places. Okay, you're not supposed, you don't need to do this, but I'm just because we're comparing, I'm going to put them down. So if I use the actual value to eight places, I get 8334, four, one. If I use uh, two terms, I get, oh my bad, hold on. This is two, this is, this is actually four terms. That's just one term. Uh, two. My, okay, my bad here. Should have corrected me. This is uh, this is the actual value. This is two terms. I'm missing six terms. This is eight terms, six terms. 
This is actually six terms. I think I, I missed one, so let me move this down. Right, zero point one one. That's right. I need to move things down. Sine of zero point one. This moves down. Yeah, you just have to add one more line, which is the one I missed. So two terms will be this and this. That would be zero plus X, right? But I missed that. So, okay, just that, just the first one. Okay, so I'm gonna add more decimal places so that we can compare. So point one, point nine, nine, eight, three, three, three. Uh, the next one is, Three three four one three three four one. This one is okay. So what you notice is that this one is not accurate. It's only well, it's not even accurate to one place, decimal place. So it's sort of inaccurate. But here we quickly get a quite a bit of accuracy. You can see it's eight three three. For one, we have eight three three three. It actually keeps repeating three three and so on. So we get almost close to six the six decimal accuracy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Accuracy. And then here we are almost there. It's like it's indistinguishable from the actual solution. So here we can see that uh, we are probably good with four terms. We don't really need to go six and eight. We just have to do more calculations, which are not just worth it, right? These are not really needed. They don't really make any your calculations any better. Now, there's also a debate whether you really care about the difference between 0.1 and 0 0.099. You probably may, you may not worry or care about that uh, difference. If, you're, if you don't care about the difference, you're actually well off by just doing two ex uh, expansion to two terms for 0.1. Now, there is no hard and fast rule as to what is a good accuracy for a calculation like this. What you can do is you can do two, two or three or four and then see if uh, at what point the number of digits don't change. So for example, here we have two terms is 0.1. We look at the four term expansion and see that uh, that's changed quite a lot, changed by three decimal places, right? So or two decimal places. So we keep the four term, we go to the six, six term expansion and see how, how different it is from the four term expansion. And you see that there's very little difference because it's accurate to six places, right? So we say, okay, we are fine with four terms and we stop. And that's one way of figuring out how many terms of expansion is adequate for your purposes. Okay, and there's no, as I said, there's no hard and fast rule. It just would depend on the function and so on. Okay, is that clear? Now with Taylor series uh, out of the way, we can use the Taylor series to do things which we really care about. One of them is differentiation. 